Congratulations. Welcome today. Welcome today. Right. Yep. <laughs> ah! Okay. <clears throat> I feel terrible, Randy. There's no suet block. Oh, you made that bird. So there's no suet block in the theater, and the birds are all just in that tree, like, judging me. Hey, guys. <laughs> right? Welcome to today's live stream. I did it. There we go. Words will work. Hey, Gwen. Hey, Pro. Hey, Sabaya. Hey, Liz. Leaf, Witch, and Gnome. How are all of y'all doing today? I bet that's exciting coming up for your uh, your event, which in Gnome. That is so cool. Sorry, I'm looking at hummingbirds again. Y'all, okay, where do I even begin? It feels like it's been a month since our last live stream. I know it was just last week because that's what our video history shows me, but I swear it feels like it was a month ago. Um, we still don't have hot water. <laughs> Our basement has finally stopped filling up with more water. We accidentally might have flooded the neighbor's driveway, um, though I'm not entirely convinced that that's entirely our own fault. Um, and I'm just, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm so exhausted. Um, all right on, hey Amanda, hey Kit, hey Polly, hey Marty. Canopies in a parking lot. Ooh, right on what you know. Hey Marie. It's just been a doozy of a day you guys the rain has finally stopped nature looks very happy to be naturing about uh, I saw three hummingbirds at the same time at my feeder today <laughs> so happy um hey Roberta hey Burke hey Sherry hey Diane <laughs> thanks all y'all so much for joining us here today oh that's all right Gwen this is just life now <laughs> and honestly it's fine we have we'll show you guys in the vlog um, over on the Monster blog on Thursday, we have this submersible pump attached to like a shower head that we take for doing dishes when we go camping. So we've just been bringing water up to like a warm temperature on the stove, sticking that into the thing. And then like, that's what we bathe with and that's what we wash our dishes with. And so that's fine. Yes. I am so glad that at least it's not cold. Uh, because our furnace, you know, the, the brand new one that we got, got submerged as well as our water heater whenever our basement flooded because the sump pump couldn't keep up with it, which I fixed through the power of bungees. <laughs> so I just got rid of a bunch of unnecessary bills. Now, ooh, right on, Kit. Get it. <laughs> hey, Dana. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Al. Hello, little hummingbird. We are working on some stuff today, and I've got to get right to it. So let's get this camera flipped around. Let's get to work. That's enough about me belly aching about our happy homeowner BS. Which you know, says, lucky the rain should either come early tomorrow or stay away. Hoping for this, but projected for some strong winds. Gotcha. Oh, no. Diane says, just had a hailstorm and freaked the dogs out. Poor puppers. So, we've been working on inventory, uh, and we're getting, we're getting some stuff. Hey, baby. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. It is very cold. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, gonna buy some seeds first. I'm so excited for you. Okay. So, I was gonna try to finish up a bunch of, hey, babe. Hey, Wendy, do you know where my wire snips are? Are they still in there from doing the silk florals? I'll be right back, guys. I gotta go find my... Um, we didn't... There they are. I found them. So I'm wrapping up a whole bunch of groovy cabs today, but I've got to put some skin on my finger because like I've been wire wrapping so much that my calluses have started cracking and it hurts real bad. So out comes the next care tape. 
How are all y'all doing today? Hey, Lynn. Send Wandy to Florida with a giant cup, please, right? <laughs> First event in five years tomorrow. Good luck to you, Al. I hope it's phenomenal. And everything you need it to be. Ooh, right on, Sabaya. Looks like we're making fishing lures. I can see that. That'd be pretty cool. I'm just going to try to put a little bit of extra skin on. Because, like, I don't know if you can see, but it, like, split open. My callus did. And it's killing me. Slowly. Apparently, that is the most used part of skin on my entire hand. Because literally everything, there we go, is hurting it. Right on, Kit. Okay. So, yeah, we're just busting out some groovy pendants. Though, in my heart, all I want to be working on is making some solar fountains for the hummingbirds. We got the solar fountains in. And I want to follow along with a lady's tutorial that I saw about um, using like a styrofoam ball. Because it's, especially after seeing all three of them at the theater, like more or less getting along. Like, it's progress. Hey, Mary Hart, how's it going? Ah, oh, right on. Marie says, just got my box from you today and just opened it up. I love what you sent me. Oh, I'm so glad it arrived safely and that you like it. <laughs> Your hands look like you were in a knife fight. I was a little, not like a full on knife fight, but just with myself. Um, just between doing a whole lot of gardening and um, we've been doing stuff around the house. Uh, fooling about with the sump pump and the drain hose and all of that stuff hasn't really helped. Uh, got a bunch of cardboard paper cuts, moving cardboard um, to take to the crisis center because we donate it there and they're able to sell it, I guess. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, Stephanie. But uh, it's just been a very very busy week and I, it it's not slowing down anytime soon which is okay but we're going to focus on the things that are in our control which currently are making an inventory hey daisy she says it's been rainy and cold here in chicago lots of basements flooding we feel your pains right on well i'm sorry that y'all going through that it sucks but I i'm super glad that randy and i have a system in place for you know that we have the sump pump sucks that it wasn't working um like the float got jammed i guess and it just the basement just kept filling um i see you hummingbird Woo. uh but, like, we already had the hose, we already had the board. Because, like, nine years ago when we first moved in, it was a couple times a year we'd have to deal with basement flooding. But we haven't really had that many problems with it, you know, uh, these past couple of years. So it didn't occur to me that something might have gotten jammed on the sump pump. We just plugged it in so it could do its thing. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, Roberta says, how did you start these pendants? Um, we actually have a tutorial uh, on how to wrap our grooved pendants. And this is just finishing up a project from earlier in the week. Um, but let's see, I can demonstrate real quick. I'm using 20 gauge para wire. And I'm using about 12 to 14 inches of it. So yeah, 20 gauge. And then this is one of our cabs that has a groove grooved into it, ground into it. Um, and then we just shape the wire up and around into that groove. And then I'm going to twist once and twice. 
before grabbing my pliers. And you want to make sure that that wire stays in the groove because as we tighten it down, it's going to stay nestled in there. You want to make sure that there's no wiggle. And then we'll be using our mandrel pliers on the six millimeter barrel. I'm going to fold this around. Can they be done with this simple wrapping without any grooving on the stones? Um, not like, not like this. Um, it's the only thing that holds it right now is the groove in the stone because otherwise I wouldn't trust it to hold. Uh, you can take two cabochons and use like a resin to stick their backs together anything that chemical cures because if it's water cure it might not cure all the way to the center whereas if you do like a chemical mix resin like um devcon two-part five minute epoxy is what i would use for this but you can glue the two sides together so that their backs sit like this which would make a little bit of a natural divot between the two stones and then you could just wrap it the same way, that away, uh, if that makes sense. Um, oh, hey, Joanna. She says, first time on, but I watch all your other videos. You're awesome, beautiful, Rick. Oh, well, thank you so much. Well, I'm really glad you like our work. And welcome to the chat. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Christy says... I make chainmail jewelry, not clothing, and I'm looking for advice on what may be good to make for a geek couture fashion show that I've been invited to. Ooh, right on. Um, how much time do you have before then? Because my most first thing to recommend would be like body chains or anything that's like drapey, because unless you know specifically the models that you're working with, it can be difficult to make something that's going to be... Uh, figure flattering as well as I don't know if it if it's a fashion show they might not be so worried about comfort um <clears throat> but yeah it's I, I've always had a lot of success with body chains because they can layer over so many different things um anything with scale nail in it is always just eye-catching and jaw-dropping um but yeah body chain is kind of just like a, a big necklace <laughs> <laughs> Um, maybe. I don't know how well super glue bonds to stone or glass, but so you might want to scuff it up first. It is, Stephanie. The skin, like you can kind of see here on my thumb. Uh it like my calluses are just splitting from doing so much wire wrapping and um like Lord knows what all we're doing around here, but it's it's starting to take a toll on my hands and the spot that the callus split um, is right where I do my itsy bitsy spiral. So yeah, <sighs> yep yep yep. So that's a, always a lot of fun. I actually instead of shooting another master class tutorial for Sunday, uh, I just did a tutorial on how what to do when you work so much that your fingers bleed. Um, so yay for <laughs> Sunday's content. Hey Kelly. And so, so the new numbers. That's, I want to show you guys because currently we are cramming. For a couple of things we are helping with the decorations so we're making balloon arches and uh, balloon clusters and all the silk floral arrangements for our friend and employees is uh, Izzy is graduating and we're good friends with her parents and with Izzy and so we, we were like we'd love to help out with that because they've got so much on their plate um, and so we're, we're doing that and that's done now so that's good um, and then we're also still putting our garden in because it's that time of year for that because it's like the, this nice weather window. If the as much work as I can get done in this nice weather window before the mosquitoes are really out and about and before it gets very, very hot and muggy and stuff, the better. And we've been able to get a whole lot done in the garden. Uh, but then we are also prepping up 
for Dragon Con and going in kid I mean, Dragon Con's all the way Labor Day weekend. But we're also kidnapping our niece again uh, for the summer and all sorts of stuff. So I wanted to show you guys. These are our new numbers. And this is how much we have not hit them because we did not hit our numbers last week. So we're shooting for 8 to 24 necklaces a week. I've done a whopping none. Uh, 20 to 60 pendants. Vaughn, get back to work. Um, which we've done 12. I've done 12. And we did that during the, an oil change on Wednesday. I set up shop in the, uh, <laughs> in the lobby of the, of the dealership. Um, 24 to 72 bracelets. Randy has made six, but I've been keeping him busy on so much stuff. Ear cuffs, I've made none. I need eight to 24 a week. This is our weekly quota. <laughs> and I don't know why I'm yelling at you because I'm really just yelling at me. <laughs> earrings, we got some earrings made and then I ran out of ear hooks. Hey baby, uh -huh. we need to buy ear hooks. All right. To buy ear hooks. And suet blocks. I think that's it. That's all I can remember for now. Um, and then rings, 6 to 18. So I have a lot of stuff to make over the next three days. And Saturday is the Master Gardener plant sale. As well as uh, the last senior concert for Izzy's choir. And then Sunday is another... Like, I don't know when I'm going to put this in. So we are getting back to crafting. Who isn't your ground too wet? Uh, we actually do raised beds, um, which really, really helps with um, just the drainage. So, and it's a lot of stuff like pruning, pruning back any overgrowth um, on the fence lines makes it a whole lot easier to, you know, stay maintained with stuff like that. So currently it is too wet for us to plant anything, but like yesterday, Randy and I installed like probably 700 feet of, did we go with the 300 foot one? What? The solar lights that we had gotten. Uh, let me look. It was a bunch. We installed a whole mess of solar lights and it's gorgeous y'all. Like it is so pretty. Um, 288 feet. Each? Yeah. That's over a thousand feet. No, I'm sorry. 72 feet each. 72 feet each. Okay. 72 times four, whatever that is. Okay. <laughs> Cause I was like, dang, that's a, there's no way. Um, coffee is friend. <laughs> I've had like half a cup today. I don't even know what's wrong with me. Oh, and for some reason, I thought it'd be a good idea to go ahead and get started on the 30 of 30 that we're doing over on the Von Monster blog as well. You know, since we have less than 100 days left of the year of yoga. And so I've been, today was day two of doing 30 minutes of punchy game or fitness boxing two on Randy's Switch. His little video game console. And so I'm like dead i'm <laughs> just dead that's fine jean says you have to show us the lights yes i agree and and we may oh there's a hummingbird i don't want i don't want the stream to crash so i'm not going to be moving the camera around a whole lot but tonight when it's dark i will um take y'all out back and show you the fairy lights you'll get in the in the after party y'all get a sneaky peeky of uh what we'll be showing to everybody over on the monster vlog on thursday hmm <laughs> Michelle says, so when are y'all going to tie the knot? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. do what, love? Yeah. Just, Vernon's like, I don't know. Uh, truly, we have no idea. We just know that we're going to get married at some point in this fiscal year. Um, <laughs> just so it can be on our 2022 taxes. Uh, we, we have no idea. We haven't really, we haven't had a moment to really put much more thought into it. Um... Right? This is one of our dichro cabs that we had made. Which, by the way, we we are still doing the 30% off all of our cabs in our shop sale. So if y'all didn't get in on that on Monday, um, we've got some more cabs in the shop and they're 30% off. So you can use coupon code MD2022. 
2022, like Mother's Day 2022, but just MD. Um, and that'll get you 30% off of your order of cabs. We have restocked our wire as well, too. If y'all are into that. Aw, thanks, guys. Truly, Randy and I have been married in our heart for 17 years now. Uh, we're just finally going to get it legal that way. Um, it should help us save some money on our taxes. <laughs> like, that is the least romantic reason in the world, I suppose, to get married. But we're not having, like, a ceremony or reception or anything like that. We're just going to go to the uh, courthouse which is actually the same courthouse that my mom and bonus dad got married at. So that'll be pretty cool. Mmm, that's good to know, Jean. We should check it out. So then it might be even sooner. <laughs> Woo, right on, Jennifer. Randy getting bumped from employee to husband, right? <laughs> I love that. But I get the feeling it doesn't come with a pay increase. It does not come with a pay increase. <laughs> and we still don't get a break room. <laughs> Sorry, just right in there. There was like a really big sigh. Ooh, Kit says, will you be uploading more? Not until Monday. Um, Just with everything that's been going on. Uh, we did get some moons added, but they sold like almost instantly. Uh... There we go. So we're not going to be doing a, a third wave this week. Just the two. Do, 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 do. Comes with a bigger honey to-do list. Now, nah, we're, we're like we're not even getting rings or anything, y'all. It's a... Uh... <laughs> Randy hasn't had a break in years. <laughs> poor, poor sweet creature. But to be fair, I don't think uh, I have either. So, but that's my own doing. Ah, hey Tank, who's a good boy? Thank you. Ah, thank you guys so much. Leaf says make some rings. We were thinking about it, and then we were like, we're just gonna lose them because <laughs> Randy was like, I'm gonna be honest. It's a very real chance that I'm gonna lose mine. And I was like, same. But I do think it'd be really fun for us to take, like, a metal smithing class and just make, like, some very plain silver bands. Um, and just try it out and see. <laughs> Ooh, um, Kit says, do you have any advice on growing white sage in a pot? Um, the most successful white sage I have ever seen was grown... Uh, in a little bit of a raised bed, which is just a smaller version of a pot. Um, but it had gravel for mulch, and it was a very sandy, uh, well-draining soil. And it probably only got watered about a week maximum. Uh, so I I'd try to make sure with, with the raised pot to make sure that it doesn't get too hot. There's a difference between having dry soil and hot soil so because even a cactus growing in the ground at the desert has its roots are insulated through all that sand um so it gives it somewhere that the roots can go to get away from the scorching heat so be sure that um you know if you have your white sage depending on your climate uh, you'll want to make sure that it's warm but not too hot dry but not being scorched and uh in that whenever you water it, it there's no standing water. And that's going to give you a really pungent white sage. <clears throat> Ooh, now that's a good idea, Al. This is tattoo rings on your fingers. Randy and I both, neither of us have tattoos either. That might be a cute idea. There we go. Another. Because once we get done with these pendants, how many pendants is that going to give us? 25 will be how many pendants we'll have made this week. And then I'll move on to the next design. <laughs> hey, Denny, how's it going? All right, on Marie. That's awesome. 
we could. That'd be pretty cool, Laura. Design the tats. <laughs> but uh, truly, after um, helping the very little bit that we've been helping with uh, Izzy's graduation party, because um, it's actually split for uh, her and one of her friends um, to kind of help share the cost, it's, we're like, you know, we're, we've had enough of party planning, so no receptions or anything. Um, ooh, that'd be cute with Janelle. Ah, Lisa says we have to move our raised beds from in front of our house to the back and the soil dense with clay in the back. Yeah. When we were in Tennessee, we did a technique called double digging, um, where we dug down about eight to ten inches and then removed that like into like a wheelbarrow off to the side um and then with a garden fork like a four tined really stiff garden fork um broke up the clay that was in the layer below where we had removed added some sand and then like uh like green sand and um any leaf mold, anything light and airy to try to break up that clay. Um, and it's a whole lot of work, but it helped so much with the drainage and the root penetration of everything that we planted in those raised beds after that. Oh, oh, Erica, I love that. So you can make a special piece of jewelry, then pass it to your nieces for when they marry. I love that a whole bunch. It's, we're kind of treating the whole garden like um, everything that we're doing for the garden this year is a kind of a, a renewing of our vows, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, that's a kind of a weird way to put it. But And so, and I was even talking to him yesterday while we were putting up the fairy lights. And I was like, for the money that we'd spend, the money and time and effort to put on, you know, a wedding... It's like we could do that same amount of work and then just leave it up in our backyard and get to enjoy it every night that we're able to come out here, you know, and every day that I come to do my chores with the chickens and stuff and just, so it's uh, very much just investing in ourselves and in our home together. Ah, Kelly. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> But if anything, uh, as things develop, we will totally um, keep you all posted. Yep, and the rabbits. <laughs> Mary Hart says, what kind of outfit you run in anyway? <laughs> well, nude if we can. <laughs> but what, what are we talking about? <laughs> ah, Patio says, it, it sure is a bunch of labor, but well worth it. Turning Georgia clay into a nice organic garden. Yes. And that's, oh, that's what it was in Tennessee, but man, that stuff just grew and grew because that clay is really nutrient dense. It, uh, sometimes <laughs> it can just be really difficult for the roots of whatever you've planted to get down in there sometimes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, Michelle says the hubs and I got married outside of a justice of the peace in Killeen, Texas, and it was really nice. It was just us and my son and my mom and his mom, and that was a really nice, beautiful day. Aw, that's wonderful. But yeah, we're, uh, our brains are very preoccupied with, um, if we're gonna have, like, if the furnace is still okay, if the water heater is gonna be okay, if there's another hummingbird, um, <laughs> so even though we're getting married, it's kind of the last thing on my mind, um, just cause, I mean, he's always been my rock, things are gonna keep being how they've been. You know, getting a piece of paper signed and paying a marriage license fee isn't going to change a whole lot. 
so what is though is we are rearranging the entire upstairs again because Maddie's coming for the summer um and so Randy and I are moving back up into the attic and man I am out of shape from it's one thing to climb one set of stairs to get up to like the, the bedroom but having to climb two sets of stairs the second set of which is like stairs but angrier somehow because they're very steep and, and like just treacherous <laughs> so uh that was fun getting the mattresses up there yesterday and ah oh my gosh <laughs> jenny says my honey and i got married on april fool's day 39 years ago that's amazing i love that Jerome was says, wait, finally? Yeah. We we went and talked to an accountant um, just to kind of check our work. And he was like, you know, you guys would save like 10% on what you're paying on your taxes if you get married. And he kind of like put it in a way that was like, question mark? And then Randy was like, hey, Vaughn, do you want to marry me? And I was like, okay. And the accountant was like, oh, oh, oh. and we're like, no, it's, he proposed like 17 years ago. It's fine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Drama says, what did I miss about coming in late? Oh, I don't even know. I saw three hummingbirds at the same time. That was pretty cool. What? <laughs> well, hey, do you want to come in here and make jewelry so I can micromanage you? No. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> you can't see it, but I'm all smiles. Like, it's it's been a freaking doozy of a week, but I'm very happy very tired but very happy and I'm like oh yeah yesterday we were supposed to produce we were supposed to uh, it's just, it's fine busy is just life now Whoop. Super yeah <laughs> Yeah, which that's, I will look forward to not having to, it's just so stressful because I hate, okay, so we were doing all that talking about like spiders and stuff, and then it's like I'm being tested because I had to go stand in the basement for about 20 minutes while we drained, because like I had to manually hold the sump pump arm up until I found some bungees and was like, I'm just going to bungee this up. Um, so I was standing there in my wellies like up to um, I was about this far away from the top of my rubber boots being the water overflowing into them um and I just standing in like amidst all the cobwebs and all these freaking spiders that live in our basement and like I, I could uh I could like it felt like because I could feel my the resistance of the cobwebs on my hair and so I'm there trying real hard to just keep my shit together. <laughs> and I'm like, Randy, I need you to yell down the stairs at me. All the things that you like about me and how amazing I am <laughs> until this is done. <laughs> because I'm about to lose my shit. And he did. And it was awesome. But I'm, I can't wait to not have to do that anymore. <laughs> Ooh, right on, Kit. She says, I really need a bunch of grooved cabs I can work up quickly. I think I'll have to get all the cabs up by next week grooved. Well, I would love to hook you up. So it's stressful but good is, is the best way I can think to put it. Just everything that's going on here lately. Yeah, no, it's horrible. And what's more is we didn't have any hot water. It's the freaking hot water. Just, <laughs> the hot water heater. Yeah, the water heater. So I was like, the hot water furnace? No, that's not what it's called. Um, is under, so I couldn't even take, like, a much-needed hot shower afterwards because we hadn't dug out the camping submersible um, shower head battery-powered pump thing. But that's all dug out now, so that'll be good. I'm going to snip that. 
Do, 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 do. Ooh, Al says, what brand are your brown nose pliers? These were, they're like just a no brand. The glitter line is really nice. And I'm suspicious that, because these are so old, these predate glitter line. But you'll notice it has very similar structure to this other pair. And these are glitter line. So maybe check those out. Because they hold up. They hold up well. Do, 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 do. Ooh, yes, this one is dichroic. <laughs> right on, Mary Hart. <laughs> Whew, but yeah, this is this is why I I really recommend groovy cabs to people. And it's like honestly the Griffette grinder um and grinder bit, like not don't get me wrong, I will take your money. If you want to buy groovy cabs from us, I will groove them all day long. But if you all if you know you're running a business and you want to have a lot of cabs and have them be grooved it's like maybe 160 bucks for the griffette grinder which is smaller than the glass star superstar that i was using and cost about half as much and honestly i like it better like it's not as it's a lot quieter uh it doesn't fight me like as much even though it's lower rpm I think it, it just it does a really good job and then the bit is like 50 bucks and that's where <laughs> that's why we have to charge as much as we do for grooving because I go through like a bit a week um sometimes so that can be challenging um but it's a Griffette grinder g-r-y-p-h-e-t-t-e -E -E grinder um if you go to like Delphi Glass or Art Glass Supplies or even Amazon and just search glass grinder, you'll be able to find it. Um, and then I use the jewelry bit, but adding grooves to cabs, there's no way that I could make pendants as quickly and as consistently with as little, I mean, even though my finger, like, I'm falling apart, y'all. Um... Like, even though I'm wrapped up like a mummy in band-aids, um, this is not nearly as hard on my hands as doing weaving or even the half round or even some of the minimalist, like, Oxana style wraps where it's just that little bit of half round down at the bottom and then cute framing and then the bail. This is still less work for me than doing that. Hey, Jennifer in New York. Weather has been bipolar. I got gotcha. you. The holster says, I think I'd groove my hand. It actually, since it's a diamond uh, coated bit, um, I can press my finger right up against it and I'm fine. Like, because I've had like my hand slip and stuff. So it's not as, I mean, I wouldn't do it on purpose a whole bunch, but for the most part, it's not been the, the hard, the sharp part is whenever you groove into the side of the cab. Sometimes if you groove too deeply, you'll get like a razor edge on the side of the cab. But you can just wear those um, finger cots. Like they've got some little silicone finger protectors that you can put on for working with like hot glue and stuff. And that gives you a little bit of a protective barrier. I don't use them because it's easy, but it would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Stephanie says, how much will you get for those? Um, I think we're going to start at 20 because it's a lot of dichro and a lot of really nice lab. Randy's probably going to price them at 25 though. Just because usually he'll be like, how much do you want to sell these for? And then he'll tack on like 5 or 10 And then they still sell. So, I mean, I'm not going to argue with the man. But you do. I do. I do. <laughs> but I've been getting better slightly. Sometimes. In my head. <laughs> no, I'm trying to get better about accepting his wisdom because he has not steered us wrong. Like, he takes care of all the pricing on the on our website. It's like, you know, he'll be like, well, what do you think of this price? And I'm like, I don't know why you're asking me. 
<laughs> like, you've been doing great. Just keep doing what you're doing. And he's like, okay. Ooh, Stephanie. <laughs> said, listen to your fiance. Girl. I guess I got to, huh? <laughs> Ooh, Kit says, I'd pay a minimum of 35 You know, believe you would. <laughs> um, truly, though, uh, we price our work, we try to price our work for whenever we're at conventions, what we would start the bidding at if we were putting these pieces into auction. And so, well, I know that they probably could sell for more, I still want to keep, like, the world's the, the world's been so kind to us. Y'all have been so kind to us. We try to keep our prices just as low as possible because you know we it's nice to be able to afford jewelry. Um and that's a big thing that got me into making jewelry is I didn't have any money to make to, to buy this stuff. And that was the biggest delusion I've ever been under is that it's cheaper to just make it yourself. Um <laughs> so <laughs> Pro says, take my money, let's have an auction. My fingers are bleeding. I need this stuff for Dragon Con. <laughs> but also, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Erica says, Mrs. Kennedy. I'm smiling so hard, my face hurts. Holster says, I feel like the lower pricing keeps people coming back. You know, and I, I think so too. And we do a lot of selling, like, uh, whenever we used to do more vending events in person, um, we did a whole lot of selling at, like, anime conventions and stuff like that, where it already cost people money just to be there. Because it's not quite like, you know, a local street festival where, you know, typically people don't drive super far and get a hotel and pay for a badge to go to a street festival, you know, arts and craft show or craft fair or something. Um, at least not in our neck of the woods. And so, you know, if it already costs people money to come in, in the main client base is like high school aged, so they may or may not be working. Um, yeah, keeping it affordable has served us really well. I'll give you two band-aids for one can. <laughs> Aw, Stephanie. I'm just a grouchy swamp troll and you know it. <laughs> Ooh, pro. Hustle, make that bread. I'm trying to think if we have any like big plastic plates. Because I watched this tutorial on how to make a hummingbird bird bath. With like a styrofoam ball and a plate and like a bucket. Well, I've got a bucket and I've got a styrofoam ball and I've got some hummingbirds in my yard. So now I just I got like almost everything. I've got almost everything. Um, but then I was thinking that I might do like I don't know some like a seashell waterfall. I don't know. I need to be making inventory. So of course my brain is like, you know what you want to do. <laughs> is all this other stuff. And I'm like, you write. And you write, you write. <laughs> if there's a ceremony, it's a very good chance it'll get live streamed. Just because me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> just for uh prostate prostate's sake or prostate posterity i don't know for the for the memory of it one more pendant and then we'll have hit our 25 for the week and then so up next do we make 
Ear cuffs or finger rings? Ooh, I can make a pole, I think. Can I? How do I? Oh, no, because I'm not on a... Posterity. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> it's for prostate's sake. Is that what I had said? Oh, my gosh. Think of the prostates. <laughs> okay. Ah, right on, Laura. <laughs> okay, so it looks like ear cuffs. First couple of votes. I'm going to go over to the computer and do a poll, I think. Hey, Wandy. Mm -hmm. You want to do a poll for me? Uh, I can. What's up? Uh, just finger rings or ear cuffs. Thank you. I really like that one. That is such a shiny. Okay, so Randy's going to be making a poll that should be popping up on y'all's screen eventually. Um, he'll probably holler when it's ready. But yeah, don't forget we've got 30% off in the shop. Uh, on cabs, and we have restocked wire. Well, Ginny, we just finished up doing a whole mess of groovy cabs. Five, ten, thirteen. Yep, that's our twenty-five out of the twenty. Which I figure, even if we just hit the minimums, because we doubled our minimums from what they were when we were prepping for Anime St. Louis. There we go. Um, how do you get it to show up on your screen? Uh -huh. Oh no, Elijah! Well, hey, Elijah. I'm sorry you lost your diamond, though. Ooh, a toe ring? Nice. Yeah, the, uh, the ear cuffs, if you just make that center start a little wider, perfect toe rings. Ooh, if we had a way to display anklets, we used to bring a little, like, acrylic foot with us, but that got creepy pretty quick, and, uh, I don't know, maybe we just needed more designs, but anklets didn't really sell very well for us. Might be worth trying again, though. Cheeky chooks! It's all about making a chicken farm. What? Brooke! <laughs> <laughs> I would I would play that because <laughs> my favorite game other than The Sims of course is a uh, stronghold because I like to play the economic campaigns and I just call it cheese farm simulator and I'll just like put out orchards and the wheat fields and the the dairy farms <laughs> Liz says you don't mind disembodied ears but an acrylic foot is creepy because like they put like toenails and stuff on it I don't know like it was it was a little weird Ooh, anklet cards that's a good idea Laura okay so I'm gonna come over well I don't know okay I gotta leave the camera here I'll be right back because the, the pole didn't show up at all Okay, we're at 53 for finger rings is at 53 and ear cuffs is at 47. So I'm going to pop into the restroom real quick. And so if you haven't voted, be sure to vote because we're calling it when I get back.
Oh, you know, I just clicked it, but what one? Finger rings. That's 56% for finger rings, so we'll make some finger rings. I'm going to rummage for some beads. <laughs> what style of finger rings should I do? <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to make a bunch with these beads. Okay. I don't know where the tray that I'm supposed to put the inventory in is, so I'm just going to put this over here. Sorry. You good? Yep. What are you listening to over there? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so for finger rings, I am going to make a whole mess using these super cute little sparkly beads. <laughs> Ooh, I like that, Jean. A pair of cute boots to put the anklets on. <laughs> right on, Christine. And then, ooh, Randy got a... Randy's been working on helm chain stretchy bracelets. And he's been doing a great job. Okay. Ooh, Laura says, do you normally put, or do you put prices on them as you go, or do you wait till the end? Um, we kind of, we wait until right before the show and then do it in a panicked frenzy. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we could probably, um, do it, like, weekly or something, but probably monthly. We'll, we'll try to do it monthly. Okay, so I'm going to do these with this little bit of 20 gauge that I've got right here. I'm going to use this same style of bead. There we go. And let's see if we can do... It's going to be about 14 inches, so I'm just going to split this bit down the middle. And I'm going to try to make a large and a small uh, in each metal tone. Possibly too large and too small, though. Oof. Hey, Penny, how's it going? <laughs> Stephanie says, I accomplish more in a panic than any other way. Yeah. <laughs> it's frantic focus. I like that list. So that's probably way too much wire. This will be fine. So I'm actually going to do three in each metal tone. A 12, a 9, and a 6. Because we were talking to one of our other vendor friends who vends Dragon. And they were like, you know you're going to move, you know, in about, what would she say? I think three times more at Dragon than what you did at Anime St. Louis just off of foot traffic alone. And I was like, oh god. So our strategy is to just make duplicates. <clears throat> so Randy's making large and small. Normally we do resizing in the booth, but we're like, we might be able to get in front of it just a bit if we do large and small of each bracelet design. Um, and then, you know, for the pendants, we're just, if I make one pendant, I'm making 25 of that style. So just to try to give us, uh, you know, as much, much inventory as possible. Because you can't sell it if you don't have it made. And I think I'm going to actually do, um, so this is our 20 gauge in titanium toned. I'm going to do one without spirals and one with spirals. So we'll actually do six rings with this bead in style. Do I even have enough for this? Before I get super ahead of myself. Five. One, two, three. Six. One, two, three. 
Oh, we got some and room to grow. Okay. Cool beans. And so that's how, that's our strategy for trying to hit these numbers. Because I need 6 to 18 rings uh, per week. And so doing all of these rings should get us, let's see, let me grab my other spool. Man, if I could finish a thought, it would be, ooh, I got 22. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, if I could finish a thought, look, a distraction. Um, Chicken Nuggets Pro, you know how we roll here. So I'm going to actually zoom out to capture all of the chaos. Because I'd started making, ooh, I can't remember who, but one of y'all had sent me an email and was like, you need to check out uh, Four Girls Jewelry and see their designs. And I followed along with one of their tutorials and I absolutely love how that weaving came out and kind of... So I was going to do five of that necklace design, but that's a lot of weaving and attribute some of my boo-boo fingers. Um, so yeah, definitely do not need, if we had that much extra off of, this is our size 12. Um, yeah, I don't need to cut that much for the next one. So let's just stick to 12 inches. This one's kind of jank though. That'll be fine. Because we have the technology. Do, do, do. Nylon gel pliers. Here to save the day. So that's one, two, three. Pro says, I'm making the small bracelets at seven and the large at eight. We're making the smalls at seven and a half and the large at nine. Um, just because... We want to be able to still have a little bit of room to, it's easier to take material off. It's faster to take material off than it is to try to weave to extend a bracelet. So we make all of our bracelets a little on the larger side, um, just in case. But we notice a very distinct difference in the reaction of folks whenever they try something on and it's too big. They're much happier than whenever they try something on and it's too small. I don't know what the psychology is behind that, but I'm like, man, if it makes your day to try, oh, all the rings are too big, but we were able to size them down. If that makes you happier than, well, the rings were too small, but they were able to size them up. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's just an observation. Um... And so we're going to keep make every, making everything too big. <laughs> hey, Pammy Joe, It's so good to see you in the chat. How are you doing? Five, six. Okay. So there's that. I guess, Miriam, like I wasn't going to delve too much deep into it, but it's like, it's just little things that my goal is to make anybody who is interested in spending money at my booth as happy as possible. <laughs> Ooh, do they, John? Tracy says Dollar Tree has the finger protectors. That'd be neat. Okay, so I'm going to do both of my size 12s first, and I'm going to get them all up to the same stage. Dollar twenty five tree. There you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I'm just doing a little bit of a twist around these. I don't want to do too much since it's a pretty busy bead already. And I just do three wraps on the side. And we do have a tutorial out for this. If you want to see the tutorial and not just the live stream kind of hangout session, it's just a simple bead ring tutorial in our wire wrapping playlist. Hey, Lydia, how's it going? Ooh, when did you buy your planter bags? Um, I'll have to put it into the Vonster vlog. We got them a few months ago. Uh, just because we always try to kind of get ahead of purchases like that because we never know how long they're going to take to get here. 
Um, ooh, Silver says, do you have any advice for somebody like me who wants to sell their jewelry but is disabled and can't do craft shows? I'm thinking of concentrating on the more expensive stuff and being artsy with it. That's always a good idea. Um, something that I saw work really well for one of my other friends, uh, who w is not a people person. Like, they're very talented, very artistic, um, but just not like they do not enjoy the peopling aspect um to the point of it's actually detrimental to sales to have them in the booth because they're so contrary which is fine it's them and I love them but um they worked with like um it was a potter I can't remember the name of the building but it it was it basically an arts and crafts boutique put on by uh, a potter who had a studio in the back and they would, anybody who wanted to kind of join the art center, it's very similar to whenever we were part of the uh, Fayetteville Art League in Fayetteville, Tennessee. Anybody who was a member could, you know, put their stuff in kind of a little bit of like an antique booth stall, but very, you know, classy art style. Um, and then they would have volunteers man the desk and like so if you had stuff in your booth and you were wanted to or were able you could you know kind of work behind the counter to do sales um joining a coalition like that might be a really good idea a great avenue um for being able to put your stuff out there without having to work the long hours without having to do the setup and tear down um someone had emailed us and was telling us about how they had gotten in with someone who had a boutique and um if you put your jewelry in their boutique whenever they went to craft shows they would just take the whole store with them and so there was a chance for your work to be sold not just in the boutique but at an arts and craft show as well and so it's very good as much as we talk about and believe in being as self-sufficient and self-reliable as possible, it is okay and encouraged to ask for help. There's people who, you know, are more than happy to help and, you know, the people that care about you even or, you know, potential friends to be made um, just by, you know, asking for help or going into places like this or maybe pairing up with an art buddy or, you know, something. It's just, it's very good, I think, to be very upfront whenever you're meeting new people um, you know, other crafters and stuff to be like, hey, I am interested in finding somebody who can run a booth either with me or for me. You know, that way, if you're upfront about it, there's no chance and, well, hopefully less of a chance in the other person feeling like you have ulterior motives you know, if that makes sense. Socializing is hard. Like, I can work with customers all day, but as soon as it gets into, like, friendship territory, I'm like, oh god, boundaries, what are they? Like, I don't know how to set boundaries, I don't want to mess up, like, where other people's boundaries are, it gets complicated, but just communicate, and uh, you'll find your way. But there are options out there for that, um, so I, I hope that that's helpful to you, Silver. Right on. Yeah. And so it's every, everything is every obstacle is not impassable. It's just uh, a, an opportunity to have to get extra creative with how to make what you're shooting for happen. But I, I think you've got this silver. You'll do great. <laughs> Brooke says, my aunt used to make jewelry and instead of doing craft shows, she had her stuff at places like salons and other places around town that sold handcrafted stuff. They sold for her and she'd go pick up money. Nice. Talking on the phone stresses me out, says Sabea. Working in person with strangers, I'm good, but being in a crowd alone walking around, anxiety. My brain is weird. Right? Like, man, it doesn't bother me a bit that there's, you know, almost 100,000 people at Dragon Con in the dealer's room. Because all I'm having to deal with is however many people can fit directly in front of my booth. It still gets pretty overwhelming, but it just, it's my little manageable corner of existence. <laughs> Dana says, I don't hate people, but I don't want to be around them either. I'm very, I love people sometimes. <laughs> but it's a... Uh, 
Realize that nobody likes being around anybody whenever we're all tired and hangry after work and stuck in traffic going home. It's like, get out of my face, other humans. I want to be not here. <laughs> so, but just being polite gets through so, so much. Yeah, that sounds like it would have worked perfect for her, Brooke. Mm -hmm. Penny says, consignment agreements with stores used to be so nice, but people ask high percentage of the profit to, uh, to put your makes in their stores now. Which, honestly, when Randy and I were looking around to see at... Um, you know, possibly renting building space. This was pre-Rona and everything. But the rent on stuff is so high that it's like... I mean, it, it, it was so high that we were like, no, that's okay. <laughs> like, it, it was steep. Like, city steep. And we have a population of 4,000. So I don't know if they were just proud of these run-down hundred-some-odd-year-old buildings that we were looking at. But... Um, able to turn any sort of profit as well. Yeah. Yeah. And Penny Van says, I remember that the rental rates were astronomical. Location would be a key in that situation, right? And it's like, but you know, good location, but you're still having to pay out the arse for it. So it's pros and cons. And then we had carried consignment for a lady once. Um, I had gone to school with her daughter <laughs> or with her granddaughter and she did like some lapidary work and like, and we gave her a copy of our vending schedule so that she'd know when to expect for, you know, things to sell. And she was pricing her stuff so high right on the front end that, like, we were even like, let's just not even take any commission. It just keeps our booth from looking empty. And she still didn't sell anything. And whenever nothing sold at the first show, and it's not like Randy and I were selling our work hand over fist. It's just nothing was really selling at that show. After the first show, like, she, you know called us in such a huff that we like like we were trying to scam her or something and it's like like she accused us of not putting her work out of favoring our own and I was like I don't know what kind of results you expected off of the first show you know and we were honest with her that it's like it was not a great show for us like these like we showed her the sales seat sales sheets but she still was like I'm gonna take my work elsewhere and I was like okay and I just never really fooled about with um consignment after that because money can ruin friendships unfortunately and it's you know Randy and I we try to you know not it, it's just money like they are our friend we, we value that more than anything but it's if you know we're trying to help somebody out by selling their stuff and it doesn't go well and it just I don't want to risk somebody turning it ugly back on us and it's like, I'd rather have you as a friend and tell you everything that you could possibly need to know so that you can go and fly from the nest on your own. But I can't do the flying for you. Yep. And again, it's like, I try to tell myself, even after all this time, because I felt like I had lost a friend. Like, we had, you know, we were acquaintances, but it felt like there was the potential to be, like, genuine friends there. And... I don't know what was going on in her life. Like, I, too, desperately needed money at the time. Um, but it's like, I don't, I just don't know what was up. So. Yes. So this is the, oh, here, let me zoom back in for you guys. So this is the simple bead ring tutorial that we had made years and years ago. And I'm making a version that just has the wrapped sides. And then I'm going to make a version that has the spirals on the sides too. So here's our other, here it is, other small ring. And for this one, I'm just going to make an itsy bitsy spiral. Like that. On one side and then the other. Mm-hmm. Business is business.
You get us, pro. <laughs> And so for these, we'll probably charge five for this one right here, and then like six for this one right here. Um, I don't meet have I don't have a link right now, Lydia. I'm not able to share that on like my phone and tablet. Um, but if you head over to Amazon and search grooved plastic ring mandrel, it should show up. Hey Randy, mm -hmm. do you want to make cordon blues? Um, sure, I can. I, unless you want to do the beans and rice. Uh, it's whatever you want. Because that's just boiling water. Right. I'm just, I'm very hungry. I had cereal today. And, oh, and a breakfast wrap. But that was like a million years ago. And, and well, uh, pickles don't count. <laughs> Oof, Pro says, I just looked at my backyard and it just grew three inches today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, Pammy Joe says, why do you use two different mandrels? Um, I like to use the ungrooved mandrel for the initial shaping of the ring. But once we make the ring, you can see here there's a little bit of the bead that protrudes down. And if I were to take this and just cram it down on the ring, there's risk of it damaging the back side of that bead. So with the grooved mandrel, I can line the bead up, maybe, with the groove and slide it down so we could stretch it to resize it. But it leaves a nice little gap so that the bead can go uh, unharassed by the mandrel. And so that's why I have two different. I got this one. Uh, the this one I actually think I got either at Michaels or Amazon. I have a blue one and a black one. I think the blue one is in our tackle boxes for taking to to shows. Um, because I take I, I've got a duplicate of the of each of them. Um, and uh, for that way I can just leave these at home. Do, 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 do. But yeah, either either Amazon or Michaels. But I got one from one and one from the other, so. Oh, thanks, Lydia. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I almost lost him because it was so tall. Oh, I thought you had lost almost lost your dog because the gate was broke. So Bayo's about to be real worried. <laughs> Michaels does have the coupons. That is true. Is this where you put them? Yeah, and I've got this bin over here with more done inventory. Do you want me to move my done inventory over to that bin? Uh, sure. I lost the tray bin. I don't know where it's supposed to, the done stuff is supposed to go. So I guess right there is perfect. <laughs> Wow, right on, Kelly. Has that been working out well for you? Oh, well, thanks, Lydia. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. We almost got married last summer, but it was really hot outside, and we didn't feel like leaving the house, so we didn't, like, we didn't get it scheduled and stuff. So that's... <laughs> we got... I, I have no justification for our poor behavior. That's just... <laughs> that's the entire mood of our life together. Is we were gonna, but it was really hot out. <laughs> Pixel says that is so valid. <laughs> well, it's like... It's hot outside. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Ah, 
Ah, thanks, Lydia. But yeah, because Maddie was here, and we were, I don't know, doing, probably fidgeting about with taxes stuff again. Um, and we were like, hey, Maddie, should we get married? Like, today? And Maddie was like, yeah, maybe. And we were like, uh, it's kind of hot out. And she's like, it is. Because we'd asked her, we were like, would you want to be the witness if we got married? And then we were like, ah, never mind. It's too hot out. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Christina. Yeah, and it's way too cold in the winter. I'm not going to get married if there's like ice on the roads. That's lame. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants sweaty wedding pics. And it would just be a wedding selfie, anyways. Though we were, because we're helping our friend uh, with her graduation party, which is, is super com like complicated. Not complicated. It is. It gets complicated sometimes because we're good friends with Izzy's mom and dad, and then we're good friends with Izzy as well because she's our employee, and we you know hang out with her probably more than anybody else at this point because we see her once a week. Um, and it, so we're we've been making the silk floral arrangements uh, for the tables at her graduation party and like all sorts of stuff. So it's kind of like doing wedding prep, um, except for like I'm not the one having to make the decisions. I just get to make the stuff. Um, and I was like looking at it and I was like, you know, these are actually the colors that I would have picked. And I was like, Randy, because we also need to make a balloon arch, uh, for, um, her graduation party. And I'm like, what if we just have her dad, who's a very good photographer, take like nice pictures of us in front of the balloon arch at Izzy's party and just have that be our wedding pictures. And he was like, we are not piggybacking off of a kid's graduation party. And I was like, ah, oh, come on, it'll save us so much money. <laughs> no, Maddie's not here yet. We'll be kidnapping her later uh, in the month. But I, I still think I'm at least going to get some really nice selfies. So I'm going to do my makeup nice for Izzy's graduation party. <laughs> wear, wear my nicest leggings and tie-dye. <laughs> right? Sweet Peach just used her stuff after her party. You know, her mom already was like... Because we use the silk floral uh, for making our, like, costumes and stuff anyhow. So that's why we were like, Pam, we'll cover the silk floral if we get to keep it after. And she's like, okay. And I already had all the jars because um, we painted up some... Like, I actually kind of just want to show you guys. It's really pretty. And, like, the whole house smells so lovely of, like, eucalyptus right now and stuff, too. So... Dust off my dice is tied. I'm ready to get married. Um, so these are these are what we use in our costumes because we can just pop the flowers off and put a rivet through the center, um, or do like a bead on some wire and incorporate these into the headdresses. And then Izzy had picked out uh the gold things, and the, this is real eucalyptus that's been dried. And so, but I spray painted these are just seven day jar candles. And I spray painted them in the backyard and put some like burlap ribbon on it. Um, and then we already had like, this is stuff for like in resin because you can dye it whatever color that you want. So it's all craft supplies. <laughs> um, and yeah, so, so yeah, it's, uh, we were going to end up keeping it all anyways. And we already had most of the stuff that I think we spent 40 bucks on silk floral. Uh, to beef it up and that was it so <laughs> yeah we're making rings today Beth and it was a lot of fun to get to make them Randy and I uh drank some beers and watched Willow because okay I have to I have to explain to you guys real quick <laughs> there's this scene in Willow and if you haven't seen Willow it's amazing and you should watch it um there's this scene in the Nelwyn village when it, before the um Bavmorda's dogs like come through and like raiding the baby cribs where they're having a downright like mating dance with like the girls are holding these like leaves and they're like shaking them at the dudes very provocatively and so I was coming in from the kitchen shaking my leaves at Randy and he didn't get it and I was like
shaped me as a child, clearly, because now I'm an adult being like, shaking my leaves at him. And he was like, I, mean, I don't dislike it, but what are you doing? <laughs> and so we had to watch Willow. And that baby in Willow is the best actress I've ever seen. You okay, Sam? What's up, buddy? Well, hey, let's go outside, okay? I'll be right back, guys. Candy woke up a dog. But yeah, so if, if y'all go watch Willow, but those were perfect shaking leaves for doing our, our shaky dance. So, <laughs> baby love me. What? <laughs> Sabaya. All I can think of is that scene from Clan of the Cave Bear. I haven't seen Clan of the Cave Bear in ages. I'm trying to think. How dare you not get it? Right? I was like... I thought you understood me. <laughs> uh, you have a ready-made wedding sitting right there. I know, I know. And that's what I was like, but we could just... I'm not renting a venue. I'm not making people spend money to come hang out either. It's the biggest thing. <sighs> so, Willow is a great movie. I love it. It's so, like, kind of corny. Um... But I love it. Mad Mardigan and uh, Sorsha. Oh my gosh. She's beautiful. I wanted to be Sorsha when I grew up. <laughs> oh, uh, which messenger? We only check our emails. Oh my god, that would be fun. I don't know. We'll see. We might get to finally do the camp along. That would be a really fun... We just... I don't know. If we get married and win the lottery, we'll just do a tour across the United States and like a camping craft along or something. So, gotta let the dogs in. If we get married and win the lottery, we'll just take a year and tour to the different campgrounds. That way nobody has to drive more than an hour. Yeah, but we all gotta, wherever it is, whatever, we all gotta grab leaves and shake them. Watch Willow for homework so you know how to shake the leaves. <laughs> right on. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> Liz says we all wanted to be Sorsha. <laughs> this one time at wedding camp. <laughs> uh. But no, legit, our budget right now is like zero. So, one day. We'll have an anniversary party every year. You you can definitely shake a chicken, Sabaya. Ooh, um, Kimmy Sue says, how would you downsize a pendant with wire weave to make earrings? Ooh, that's tricky. Because I've never really had a pair of uh, woven earrings come out not giant um typically if i'm trying to match a pendant to earrings like let's say for the pendant i might be using five core wires in doing a weave if there's a way that i can make that be three core wires and do just a smaller version of the weave that's typically what i'll do for the earrings um just doing something where if you can fit in a bit of the weave pattern or a shrunken version of it and if it's the same metal tone and if you use the same gemstone or you know gem color or kind of color family um so like if you have carnelian for the pendant and then red agate for the earrings it would still look kind of like it matches <laughs> it's good stuff christina <laughs> oh no stephanie There we go. 
yeah, I'm pretty tickled to be getting 18 rings out of this one design just by doing a spiral version and a no spiral version and then doing three sizes. All right on, Penny. Now, we're, we're not doing... I mean, having fun thinking about it. Don't get me wrong, but I'm very grounded in the reality of we've probably got about half a day to do it in. Um, so we'll probably just go and get the Justice of the Peace signed and then come back home and get right back to work whenever it happens. And then, because we have our whole life together ahead of us, just as we've had this whole 17 years behind us to get us to where we are now. But, so we don't got to fit all of the adventure into one day. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to be having a wedding. We're just going to, we're just going to get the paper signed and keys and then. <laughs> so there's those ones. Let us find the next wire color we're going to use. I'll actually be able to do four designs of this ring. Do I seriously still not have any 20 gauge of that? I got 22 gauge. Mm, I guess we'll do some 18 gauge. I don't even have a whole lot of that either. We'll do it in bare copper. You know, copper made out of bears. That's cool, Sabea. We'll probably maybe throw, a, we'll have to see where life is. <clears throat> but on our 20 year anniversary, we might be, we might finally be in a position to do a big deal. Have all the friends and fam and stuff. Okay, so there's one, two. Uh, right now, I in all of them, I'm using 20 gauge. Right now, I'm cutting bare copper. The wire that we just worked in was titanium. And then I'm also going to be doing this in antique copper as well as this. They sent it to us and it says smoky quartz, but y'all, this looks just like vintage bronze. So we'll say smoky quartz, but... I put it in line with my other vintage bronze colors. One, two, three, four. Five. And... Ooh, goodness. Stay safe, Kaima. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to save battery. See y'all later. Be safe. And good luck. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, uh, I don't have for these ones. Um, if you go to our wire wrap masterclass lesson one, that has links to all the different tools and materials that I use for wire wrapping. Um, so hopefully that will be helpful to you. But these I got from Michaels, I'm pretty sure. Hey, Cherie. It's going really well. How have you been? No, Siri, I'm not talking to you. Go away. Thank you, Robot Overlord. <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean to be rude, but I hate it when the uh, tablet thinks I'm talking to the robot that's always listening. Um, I'm making 12, 9, and 6 for the ring sizes. And I'm using 12 inches of wire. Are you going to do a wrestling, wrestling weave? What's a wrestling weave, Precious? Uh, we are going to be getting into wire weaving. I think it might be what your phone meant. Wire, gotcha. 
Yeah, um, lesson five is actually going to be on <clears throat> lesson five is we're going to be teaching this weaving pattern for this component that can be used individually as earrings or in line as a necklace or multiples made for an even more extravagant necklace. Right on. Sharice has got a new job. Something's better than nothing for sure. Oh, that's awesome. I hope those have been going really well for you, Sharice. How many was that? One more. There we go. <laughs> the wrestling wave, right? And now for the vintage bronze. Which, honestly, I should probably be doing some in the bright silver as well. Hey, hummingbirds. Two hummingbirds. Oh, my God. Ah, I think they might be a mating pair. Or that might be a different kind of wrestling that they're doing. I'm not. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would watch. That's fair. Hey, Linda, how's it going? You can hear the toads hollering back in the bachelor pad. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it the, uh, I like bachelor pad better than the tinder pond. Right on, sweet peach. <laughs> Oh, well, welcome home from the hospital, Beth. How are you doing? Hey, Jennifer. Right on. Um, Rachel, you might want to check out our most recent, one of our most recent tutorials. Um, that's exactly on that. Uh, how to wrap a crystal point with no hole and no groove. Four, five, and... There is going to be an after party today. It'll be from 7.30 to at least 9 p.m. We will be showing you guys the backyard all lit up. Um, and uh, as well as, you know, continued crafting. And that's for our $1 and up Happy Crafter Club members. If you guys are interested in joining in on that, uh, you can find us. On, you can sign up on our website, backtoearthcreations.com, or you can sign up over on Patreon. Uh, and that's just as little as a dollar a month. <laughs> right? Right on, Pammy Joe. Mm, I think we're still here, Sherry. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I still have sound. Okay. Ooh, right on, Brooke. Okay, so now that we've done the snipping, and I, I'm trying to keep my work surface a little less chaotic, so let me set some stuff just out of the way. I can always reach and grab the tool again. There we go. Um, yeah. This last, with our new display, this last vending event we did, we almost sold out of finger rings and we almost sold out of ear cuffs. Like, we completely sold out of our back stock and had to take half of the display down. So, yeah, I'd say, yeah, well, half of the ring display, oh. to be specific. Because out of the four sets of, like, fingers, um... Jump is the oven not heating up? That's fair. Okay, and I'm going to start it at 12. I 
actually apparently it's super good for the algorithm if everybody dislikes a video or not dislikes it just removes their like and then clicks like again at the same time uh randy watches a feller named the spiffing brit who does all sorts of interesting hacks like that on like video games and also on youtube so if everybody wants to remove their like from the video and then click like again, in no way are you pressured to. It's just a fun experiment. But uh, <laughs> we'll see if that... Because um, he got up onto the recommended. Like... Yeah, three on trending. Ooh, number three on trending. Uh, the spiffing Brit. Oh, he's hilarious. Like, I actually made Randy a little tea box with his logo on it, and we drink Yorkshire tea now. Like, the feller has the most effective uh, brand marketing I've ever experienced. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Yep, spiffing. Lots of uh, video game stuff, but we, we enjoy his content. Well, it smells like something's on fire. Is everything okay? Yeah, just be now. Oh, okay. To be fair, part of the ceiling might have fallen onto the stove whenever it was like that waterfall coming out Nothing of the. Nothing fell. Nothing fell. It's just water. It's just the water. Okay. Well, I think I got up all the paint flakes that came showering down. Well, it's because I didn't want to tell you because it was very stressful. <laughs> do, 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 do. Ooh, well, thank you, guys. <laughs> Deborah says, I triple light. <laughs> Y'all are amazing. <laughs> so there's one ring, and we're doing them in the... Ooh, I need to keep these separate so I make sure to do the correct sizes in each of the things. Twinnings for life. I usually drink uh, PG tips, but we do twinnings. Oh, what's it? Randy likes uh, Irish breakfast. Honestly, the Yorkshire gold is pretty good, though. Because I guess we've got, like, hard water or something, and it's supposed to do better with it, with that. Okay, I did one without the spiral, so this one will be with the spirals. The algorithm is shook. <laughs> Are you thumbs downing me, pro? You rebel. Engagement's engagement, bro. <laughs> ah! Mary Hart says we have a million tree frogs in our area. Very loud, but cool, too. <laughs> We've, we've just got a couple of, uh, it's American toads. I think if I've identified the species correctly, they're American toads. Just say that because you caught them eating chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was feeding my fish crackers, though. Hey, hummingbird. You're so pretty. Wow. We got a good look at a, a male ruby-throated hummingbird in the backyard. Oh, I'm sorry, chickadees. We're all out of suet. I think I'm going to have to just make some of my own. But I don't have any molds or anything for it. <laughs> What's happening to me? For my third show in the same local event, I made one grand. Just tell my friend. She was like, that's not worth it. You should quit. What? Yeah, for reals. I'd set up my booth for a grand. I mean, unless it costs me, you know, 2k to be there, but still. Hmm. And it's also, keep in mind, like, initial investments into tools and organization and your booth display and setup and stuff, you're not going to cover all of your expenses at your first craft show. I mean, if you do, that's amazing. But yeah, don't uh, don't don't quit. Keep at it. And not. I mean, how long were you set up for too? Hmm. 
What's up, Anna? <laughs> Uh, hey, Sherry says, hi, and I'm so sorry my phone is acting up. I think you're good. Just wanted to tell you how much you inspire me and how very grateful I am to you all. You've given me hope. Well, thank you, Sherry, for letting me know. I'm glad that we can be helpful to you. Yeah, 1K is real good for your third show. <laughs> like, no, do, do not quit. I don't know what's up with your friend. But it's like, and it was it. It only cost ten dollars, but five hours. <laughs> Short of, I can't think of a single other career where you can pull in that kind of cash in five hours. Ooh, make them in a muffin tin. That's a good idea, Stephanie. I mean, short of doing something that takes an eight-year degree and you know all all sorts of stuff. Hmm. Well, right, Laura. <laughs> I I can't think of many legal uh careers that you can pull in that kind of money in five hours. Mm-hmm. So good on you. Congratulations for your sale. And honestly, the it, it's ah, this is tricky. This advice that I'm about to give, take it with a grain of salt because it may not be applicable. But typically, whenever I get negative feedback in a in a way that's kind of maybe has a taste of attitude on it, or um, you know, something it's it makes me I get suspicious that I'm doing something correctly when people lash out and they're like, ah, go drink bleach or whenever they're like, you should quit. Or, you know, it, it makes me think my success might be triggering something in them that they need to work through. And this is not about me. It's other people's reaction to what I'm doing in my life is not my responsibility. If I'm not doing it directly to them, like if I'm just out in my backyard, minding my own business, doing my vlog thing, and somebody comes through and they start reaming me a new one, Makes me think I'm doing something correct. So, yeah, do, do not let somebody else try to put a candle or a, a glass over your flame because how bright you're shining hurts their eyes. So, and again, that's not always the case, and I always try to check myself, but you know. <laughs> Silver says, yes, it's called projection. It's fair. Okay, so we did the two at 12, so now let's do two at nine in our okay. antique copper. Do, 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 do. Uh, it could also be that sometimes people are bitter because it didn't work out for them. Yeah, that's true, babe. There was that one lady who yelled at me for a solid 15 minutes in the break room. Do you want to come... In here and talk about it, yeah. please, because I think that this is a really valuable. I, I, I okay. Well, I didn't want to just von splain. Uh, and also I wasn't there. You've heard the story enough times. That's fair. There was story time. Um, Randy was saying that you know sometimes people might have that reaction too because they're bitter because. When they tried it, it didn't work out. And this is difficult because I'm never condemning people because of their bad behavior or poor behavior. You know, it's like, you know, hurt people, hurt people. And while Randy and I try really hard to not inflict any damage we might be carrying around and unaware of, we don't want to be inflicting that on other folks. But this lady chewed him out. He said for 15 minutes she was yelling at him. Because he had put in his two weeks at Walmart because they had given him a five cent cost of living raise. And we couldn't make ends meet. Just period. Like it was, we were never going to get ahead and we were, you know, one mild inconvenience away from be from losing our apartment. From like, like if the car broke down, if anything, if any single thing went wrong, we were screwed. 
And we had done our first craft show and made $500 in three days, which is more than what we, I've ever brought in, in a two week paycheck, you know, in a town with no job options. So we were like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to take the plunge. We're going to take the risk and we're going to do this. We're young. We don't have kids. We didn't have debt at the time. Um, we we're like, we're going to do it. And she chewed him out. And I don't know what she said specifically, but the gist of it was that you're stupid. This is just going to fail. You know, you're going to, you know, I don't know if she said that he was going to regret it, but it was, if she said that you were going to regret it. Yeah. And it's, that was back in 2008, y'all. And she did really nice, like monogrammed, um, like diaper bags. You know, with like an embroidery machine and stuff. Like, I think her and her daughter would go and set up at the local craft shows. And it's like, I, I don't know why she thinks it didn't work out for her. Because she had always seemed successful in our eyes. You know, she was always there rocking it at the craft shows. Um, But it's well, she had worked with Randy for three years. And I, I think it's difficult I know I have a hard time and I'm only in my mid thirties whenever there's a young person, you know, with hopes and dreams and ambitions and stuff. It's really difficult for my, for me to not feel some level of, you know, maternal instinct towards them to want to be nurturing and supportive. And, you know, gosh, if anybody had been looking out for Randy and I, when we were young, you know, so it's, I always try to, you know, maybe be to someone who's younger than me, give them a leg up that we never got you know, or to be helpful to them in a way that we needed and nobody was there for, you know, and, and I guess maybe that's my way of projecting, and that's unfair of me to project my needs onto somebody else, but if I just let them know that I'm available, you know, to try to be helpful, to, to, you know, if we can make these videos and put it out there for somebody else to find and be helpful to them and help them, you know, with their booth set up to, in any way, if we can be helpful in how they get to their success. You know, whatever that is and whatever that looks like is up to them. But if we could be helpful, then mission accomplished. And so I, I can, and Randy, he's still adorable, but he was such a baby-faced, dashing darling um, when he was younger. So I can totally, you know, understand if she was just looking out for him. Um, So... I don't know, maybe she felt like she was trying to give him the advice she wished somebody had given her. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know her story, but it made Randy feel like a big old, <laughs> you know, uh, and well, I'm going to go out and live my life. I'm sorry that, you know, you feel that way. Sebaeus has been on my own since I was 17 when full time makes you tough and see through people's BS. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Randy says patience, right? Pro saying I need help. What you need, pro? Oh. <laughs> Just like you Oh, <laughs> right? Yeah. What? What's, okay, this one does need spirals. Haha, -ha, you can't bleed if your fingers are taped up. They're just bleeding on the inside. Right on. Kimmy Sue says, I'm only doing local shows so far because I'm disabled, but not sure how to branch out. I gotcha. Um... I don't know. I, I don't know what's in your realm of what you're willing to more or less put yourself through because not everybody's down for, you know, Randy can drive, used to could drive, we try to not make them anymore, drive 17 hours in a day. So that really expanded our window of opportunity to go vend at because you can do a show every weekend if you're willing to drive up to 17 hours. Um, but not everybody wants to put themselves through that. And I respect and understand that. So. <laughs> I think just open a huge can of worms. Oh no, bro. <laughs> oh 
believe they can afford me anymore. Who's that? Walmart. Yeah. Because we were looking at pre anime St. Louis, we were looking at where Randy might be able to get a job um, when we came home. And we're still kind of looking at, he, he was thinking about getting employed over the winter. Um, and it's just, it's really hard to, because they'll work you to death, man. Not just Walmart, but anywhere nowadays. And and Randy's a hard worker, and it's like the the worst thing you can do for Randy is pay him, because it's like he had gotten his paycheck when he was working at the dog food factory uh, back in 2016, and he's like, "That's it, I worked this hard for this," like, but it's you know no shows in the winter, and you do what you do. Pro says, "I'll hire him." <laughs> I need to hire him. <laughs> And that's what we had looked at, too, is because we were afraid we didn't know how Anime St. Louis would go. And it went as well as it did and covered a lot of these pressing bills that we had, you know, making us feel pretty pinched. Um, so, but we're always, 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 always looking for ways to keep our heads above the water. Now, if I could stop spending money on hummingbird feeders and plants, but that's unrealistic. Um, so we'll just have to figure out more ways of making money. <laughs> Okay, so we got both the nines onto the sixes. I like these rings. They crank out pretty quick. Ooh. Silver says, 30 years ago, I bought a wire-wrapped ring with a natural rose quartz in a cage-type deal at a farmer's market in L.A. Do you have any videos for a ring like that? I don't believe I do. I don't know if I've ever seen what you're talking about. Do you still have it? Pro says, but he will have to learn how to use a table saw safely. You might want to you might want to lower your expectations on that one, Pro. <laughs> hey, Gary, how's it going? Do, 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 do. Ah, Kimmy says, I'm in Florida, but have to rely on my son to drive me. Gotcha. Um, I don't know. Something might be uh, something that might be an option is to network and see if there's a trusted friend or local artist or you know it's something like that that if you guys want to carpool be like I can't do any driving but I can help keep you awake I can help cover gas like just and having a partner to help run a booth anyways um is very very nice do it babe really helps with potty yeah really helps with potty breaks hey Tara I was told today I need to start making rings, so I guess this is a sign. It might be, Tara. <laughs> oh, we've got two in the front and two in the back, and a fuchsia plant that's hanging that I can't see from my current sitting position, but that's okay. I'll, they can they can eat without me watching, I suppose. Um, and then another fuchsia plant. And then the Latanya, guys. They love the Latanya. That's where I saw the ruby-throated uh, the male, because he had such a beautiful throat. And I don't know if they have other species in our area. I don't think I've seen them. But I think we just have male and female uh, ruby-throated hummingbirds in our yard. But it makes me so happy. Especially to see I saw three at the same time. That is a first in my life. I have never seen that many hummingbirds with my own eyeballs. Like, I've seen it in videos and stuff, but it's completely different to see it through this scuzzy window. <laughs> so and yesterday randy was helping me hang these little glowing orbs in the red bud tree and uh, there was a hummingbird maybe three feet behind uh four to five feet i'm not good at measuring things it was close right behind his shoulder like over the uh bird bath on the stump bed and it was just oh so exciting <laughs> it was close i could hear it too. oh really that's amazing. But yeah, because you got stock still. Like there was a hornet or something next to you. Like, and the way that your face was, because I think you saw me looking. Yeah. In between me looking and hearing the noise, like your whole body had gone tense and everything. And then I was like, hummingbird, right shoulder. And you turned and he was gone. But it was, that was cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, whatever you're cooking smells good, babe. Gotcha. What were we having? Cordon blues. Are we having loose leaf potatoes? Uh, instant mashed potatoes. Man, I found a 15 pound bag of red potatoes for like five bucks at King Cash Saver. I think, whoops, sorry, loud noises. I think I'm going to have to uh, can them or something. Man, I found a $35 bidet at Walmart and I was like, don't mind if I do. <laughs> you did. That is a true story. <laughs> Ooh, oh, congrats, Gary. What a taters, precious, glorious. Ooh, Randy just tossed another uh, bracelet into the pile. You're a champion, babe. <laughs> Silver says, why is the video so grainy? Um, well, first off, I'm live streaming to space on my phone. So the quality of my live streams is never particularly great. Um, we're hoping eventually they'll get fiber internet on our end of town because that would just be amazing. Um, though with any sort of luck, it'll be right in time for us to move to our forever home uh, in Tennessee, if that ever gets to happen. Um, but yeah, you can, uh, upgrade the settings in the, like, thank you, Kelly. She says, click the little cog wheel and change the settings. <gasps> Penny says, I saw an albino hummingbird on the news a few nights ago. <gasps> Whoa! I'm really digging these. I'm glad I had enough beads. Ah, right on, Gary. <laughs> From a Tandy Leather in Illinois. Hey. If it works, it works. Mm, all right, shows that we actually have 111 likes, Kelly. Though, this would be another great opportunity if everybody wanted to remove their thumbs up and then click like again. We're experimenting to see if the Spiffing Brits theory, though I'd say he proved it because it got him onto number three on the uh, trending. But, ah, right on. Hey, witch. Hey, gnome. Yeah, because there's Scarborough, I think, is happening this time of year, Michelle. And that's a, a pretty good one. And then uh, Tenren in October, I think, is another really good Ren Fair. There's another one that's smaller that Randy and I have never been to that one. Okay, so there's all of the antique copper. Let's do some bare copper now just to get it cleared up out of the way. Ooh, right on, Penny. Oh, gotcha, Tara. Okay, so we start by threading on the bead into the center line. And I'm going to be making the first two at 12. So I'm just wrapping around, making sure that the wires don't cross. until it comes in like that. Ooh, yeah, the Carolina Ren Fair, Adam. And then we're gonna twist it around like that. And then we're gonna do an additional twist. And this is with the bare copper from Parawire. It is so supple and nice, you guys. Oh, the sun's out. And then I remove my mantle. Kimmy Sue says, is there a place you can search for events? 
Um, there are a few, like, compiled lists on the internet. If you just search craft shows near me, they'll probably come up in the ads. Um, but I, I truly just, if I'm looking for an event, like, let's say if we wanted to justify going and visiting, like, family, we'd look for craft shows in Nashville. And then it's like, well, let's say we want to go in August. Oh, which is not the case, but this is completely hypothetical. I'd search and be like, craft shows in Nashville in August. And you'd be surprised, but Google's real good at just <laughs> giving you information. And um, and so typically uh, what we used to do is like, okay, we're interested in not having to drive more than eight hours to get to an event. Um, and so we would search what's a city within eight hours from us. You know, just looking at like Google Maps. And so, like, for us at our current location, Springfield's pretty close, and that's only, like, an hour away. And then, you know, Eureka Springs in Arkansas is another area that that's, like, two, maybe two and a half hours away. <clears throat> and so we would just start searching that same thing. So either conventions or fairy festivals or arts and craft shows. <clears throat> and um, just kind of go from there. And most websites, like... And, any vending event is going to have a website where you can um, find vendor information, any kind of pertinent information. And honestly, I take that as a red flag if they don't have a website. If the event only has a Facebook page, I don't take it very seriously. It's I want some some place that has its own website that has that information listed year round. Now they may have, you know, social media pages as well, but that shouldn't be your only hub uh, for presenting information, you know, because you need to have a place to be able to, you know, fill out vendor application forms to have a listing of, you know, if it's an, the sort of event that has guests or panels or anything like that, you need to have a place where all of that is very clearly laid out is the dog okay? Yeah. Okay. Right, Michelle. <laughs> Ooh, Randy finally told me that we can go RV shopping if we win the lottery. So now I need to get better at gambling and start actually buying lottery tickets because I want to travel in an RV. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Tara says, ooh, I would charge $5 for those. Do you charge more for more expensive beats? Yes. And I actually do five for the ones like this one that doesn't have the spirals. And I charge six for the ones with spirals. And we do free resizing. And that is, not going to lie, our bread and butter <laughs> is our $5 items in our booth. <laughs> right, Tracy, you're good. Ah, right on, Michelle. Babe, mm -hmm. are you boiling water? Yes. Okay. I just heard a noise. Ooh, Kimmy Sue said, what is roughly the most to pay for an event? That is a very difficult question to answer accurately. Um, because I've never paid as much for a craft show as what I have for a convention. Um, typically for craft shows, uh, I would expect to pay anywhere from 50 to like maybe 150 if they're getting if they're charging more than 150 to maybe 250 i'm remembering now the neca craft shows that were indoors and juried were charging 250 but i mean you definitely make your money back there like i i don't think we ever did a neca show where we made less than you know a, a thousand uh so and it was local it was like you know a 45 minute drive away from us which was local for we lived in the sticks um and so it's really difficult because you know 
you get these, I get these expectations about an event that it's like, okay, they're charging this much. They seem to be doing this kind of marketing because that's whenever they're charging more than, you know, let's just say 50 bucks, they better be doing some serious marketing, like more than just the vinyl signs on the sides of the roads. Like I'd be looking for billboards. I'd be looking for radio ads. I'd be looking for, um, sponsored ads on Facebook, like where they're actually dishing out you know, using some of your booth fee for the marketing so that you can reach a broad enough audience to be able to make your money back. Because if they're charging that much and they're not putting in the advertising effort, they're making money off of your booth more so than you're going to be making money off of their event. So event organizers need to take care of their vendors. Um, and that's the best way that I've seen them do that is, you know, to actually advertise and get people to show up to this stinking event. <laughs> uh, hey, Sharon. Well, welcome to the channel. Anna says, was it for two days? It was a three-day weekend. Um, and I think we pulled in, like, and this was a long time ago, but we pulled in, like, 1,400, I think. Because we were so excited because it was our first time, first or second time breaking, you know, four digits. We We thought we were... <laughs> you know, on top of the world, we were like, this is amazing. We'll never have to worry about money again. We were wrong. Um, it was amazing though, but I underestimated how good I am at spending money. Um, <laughs> like, and how expensive existing is. Like, WTF. <sighs> Oop, 7.05. I was just going to keep streaming forever, I think. Okay, so there's our two size 12s. Okay, flipping this around. So we are going to, we're going to go. We're going to have our dinner break. Pro says Randy is slacking. Randy's in there cooking. Um, you probably can't tell what time it is because the oven's on. And that it doesn't have a clock. It just says 350 degrees or however much it is. So <laughs> Tara says, I'm not copying you. Lies, all lies. No, dude, if you can take only our model. Honey. It's only 375 in the afternoon. I can keep. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> um, it's amazing. <laughs> if you can take what has worked for us and make it work for you and change it in whatever ways that you need, do it copy us until the cows come home like shout outs are always nice whenever people post to social media and anytime anybody asks y'all oh how do you do this what do you blah, blah, blah. like just pass on the, we, we give freely here so that y'all can afford to give freely as well so Katrina says I remember my first time doing four digits it was my first two-day show by myself but it was a November show gotta get that holiday money so thank you guys so so much for coming and hanging out with us we'll see y'all hopefully in the after party and uh if not then we will see you in sunday's tutorial and then again in monday's shop update so thank y'all so much again and until next time happy crafting Mwah. bye <laughs> Boop. oh i can't press it with my finger